Once again, this episode is being brought to you by Diesel Fuel prints.com diesel fuel prints has been in the sticker business since 1991 and they've been printing all of my stickers since the early 2000s dieselfueledprints.com has easy online ordering and quotes for stickers of any size and shape full color printing on the highest quality weatherproof material and 125 black and white stickers starts at 25 dollars shipping's always free and listeners of this show can get 10 percent off when they use the promo code AWP2021. So go check out Diesel Fuel Prints for your sticker needs. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Anyway Whatever podcast. I'm your host, Mike Fisher, as always, and today's guest is illustrator Jeff Lachance. Um, Jeff and I have been friends through the art business for you know close to 20 years. Uh, we talk almost every day online, so <laughs> we're very good friends. Jeff's a fantastic illustrator. He's one of my favorite um, cartoonists. We work in a similar style a lot of the times, and sometimes we even work for the same bands. Really cool guy. Hilarious dude. Um, somebody who I actually have been able to meet in real life through the art scene. Nowadays, with the internet, sometimes you can be friends with people for a long time and never actually get to meet them. But it, I actually know Jeff. He's a good dude. Super happy that he decided to come on. Um, you know, I think people are going to dig this episode. If you are familiar with gigposters.com, you guys all know Jeff Lachance. And um, yeah, as always, all this stuff about the show, sponsors, advertising, merch, all of that stuff can be found in the description below. So go check that out. Let's get you to the episode right on the other side of this. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Anyway Whatever podcast. As you heard me say in the intro up front, today's guest is illustrator Jeff Lachance. What's up, Jeff? How are you, buddy? Hello. How, <laughs> How are you, you been, man? Not, not bad. Not bad. It's getting uh, better. It's getting better. <laughs> me and you are one of the people um, in, my, in my online life that I speak to pretty much every day. Yeah, and yeah. if you go all the way back through the, the history of of gig posters is up i bet we've talked almost every day for 20 years yeah pretty much <laughs> i just realized the other day was i joined gig posters in 2004 so was that it i, I would have thought you would have been closer no, to the beginning I, yeah, in the you guys have already established a little bit of a click so <laughs> but uh i weaseled my way into that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh i i was one of the first people to sign up for that message where it's like me and el magro el negro man magnifico yeah Dave, he's the Dave first guy to actually him and actually tom papalato i'm surprised you haven't had tom papalato on yet <laughs> of course he was one of the first people i asked and he was like i don't think i'll be any good and he refused to come on my show <laughs> <laughs> him and goad both were like no i'm not good in that format so i tried yeah. i tried yeah, yeah. He'd, have, he'd certainly be interesting, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Tom's one of my favorite creative people. Like he's one oh, of his yeah. people. He's got he's just, he's got such good style and taste. Like he's just an interesting, yeah, person. And you know, it's like he makes good music and he makes good art and he's got interesting, you know, interests. And <laughs> he's right, yeah, just yeah, one yeah, of yeah. those dudes. Like he would be like the best grandfather in the world to have <laughs> as a grandfather. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. like whatever kid ended up with Tom Papalardo as her grandparent would be like, they'd get the, the jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> yep. He, he actually lives in my state, but he lives so far West. It's like, there's a venue out there that I've seen a couple of shows at. So when I go out there to see a show, I'll, I'll hit him up and see if he's available. We have a couple of beers or something, but it hasn't been very often because it's so goddamn far. It's like it's it's like almost friggin' Eastern New York, you know. <laughs> yeah, when when I met you and Tom in person at Flatstock, um, you know, 
us from the West Coast, we don't always understand all the the, the distances and logistics of the East Coast. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, you know, they live in Massachusetts. They're, those are Boston guys. And then like over right. the course of time, I was like, well, they don't live anywhere near each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, we don't. I actually live almost the uh, as far as you can live with living in the same state away from each other. But uh, I, I live like 30 miles outside of Boston. You're like so. Lowell, right? Uh, I'm actually in Thune, which is, it, it's right next to Lawrence and near Lowell, but it's not Lowell. Mm-hmm. I don't live in Lowell, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a friend that I grew up playing hockey with who went to Lowell for hockey school or for, yeah, for yeah. college. They used to have a youth program. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> did. They were like, you know, full, you know, NCAA yeah. tier had, one uh, hockey. Yeah, former Bruin was their coach, uh, Bruce Crowder, I think. For the longest time. And uh, that's when they used to like, you know, they used to be fucking great. You know, people would yeah. actually go there for the hockey program. Yeah. The Lock Monsters. My, it, yeah. No, wait. The, was it Lock Monsters? The, the, no, ro- the Lowell Lock Monsters. They were a, a minor were, uh, league team. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I, th- I forget who they were uh, affiliated. Well, must have been the close. Bruins, right? <laughs> no. No, the Providence Bruins were oh, uh, right. Bruins. So I think it was like, I, th- I want to say the Buffalo Sabres, but I'm, I'm not could positive. Be. Could be. Yeah. Here we are talking hockey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know what, dude? I have not watched a single hockey game since this pandemic started. I tried to watch a game when it was like the empty crowds when they first started back, and it was so disturbing that I stopped, and then I just didn't watch any games this season. I yeah, I didn't like last year with the uh, the no crowds and nothing. Like hockey is such a involved sport. We you know crowd gets into it and they feed off of what's going on, and it's like the, these huge goals and nobody you wouldn't hear a peep. It's just the guys on the ice like yeah, all right. And then this year they did this weird thing where they the Eastern teams only played the Eastern teams like. Hmm. They played. They uh, Bruins played like the Rangers, the Capitals, and the Sabers like twenty times. It was and it's weird. So I don't know yeah, how. I don't, like gonna, I don't know how they're going to figure out the playoffs. That starts. That starts Saturday for the Bruins. Yeah, but I don't actually, know if they're going to play a West any West Coast games. They have to play. You have to at some point. <laughs> at, at, at at the very minimum in the finals <laughs> right yeah yeah exactly right so yeah. oh yeah you know, i don't know, you know they're letting people back work. in now so i think uh boston gardens up to like 25 percent and so at least there's some That's people weird. there and you know they just got the mics cranked so you can hear them <laughs> but uh yeah we're so, in. yeah hockey hockey digression aside um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> um me and Jeff, uh, we 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 have a lot of similar influences. So I think a lot of the time we'll do work that looks pretty similar to each other's work. Yeah. Um, you know, we're very similar age, and I think our influences are all you know pretty the much the same yeah. influences we grew yeah. up on. You know, ACDC and Kiss records and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and you know, like in like Jim uh, Jim Phillips and you know Ed Roth and Frank Kozik and you know a lot of the same you know guys that I looked up to you know who try I tried to emulate or you know rip off or whatever you want to call it you know uh, <laughs> for sure yeah, that man was, that was definitely you know I mean I remember when I was a kid and they had that like you know um, what, it was like a book and it was like a book of it was an Ed Roth book, but it was like all hot rods and stuff like that. It was, you know, but it, you know, it wasn't like drawings. It was actual cars that he had built or, you know, had a hand in building. So I remember, I, I remember that book like it was yesterday. I wish I still had it. I don't have it anymore, but it was so cool. Like I remember, I remember like those in the seventies, those, uh, they had trading cards of like hot rods and like, you know, it was, you know, I remember like trying to collect them all and, it's like, can, it's like anything, it's always one you don't get. Or <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that that, that's crazy. they do that to you on purpose. So you keep yeah, buying well, I, didn't, I didn't realize that back then. I'm like, wow, it's so hard to get this car. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you know, like, you know, I think I had on top of I, my dad was like a hot rod guy. So I was like, you know, yeah. that, there was a lot of that stuff around around my house when I was growing up. But. 
you know, like we were kind of talking before we got going, like my parents would, would buy me books about anything I was interested in. And yeah. So when I started really getting interested in making art, they would buy me like, you know, every art book. And I, I remember having one that was like how to draw, you know, cartoon hot rods. And it was basically just oh, yeah. like how to draw like Ed Roth cars, right. basically, you know? Yeah. And then I had like the how to draw a hundred and different monsters book. And, you know, yeah. and then you get that Preston Blair book that everybody yeah. knows. And, you yeah. know, like, yeah, I think I a have, lot of I, have, us I still of, have that book. <laughs> I go to I, it often. I have two versions. I have like the tall, the tall, large format one that's very thin. And then yeah. I have like the normal size one that's very thick. Oh, yeah. No, I have the, the tall one, the original one from the 70s. Yeah, there's a there's a, a bigger, fuller, longer version of that. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's very wow. good. And it's like know. all of the stuff that's in that t- that taller book comes out of that book. Oh, um, right, and it's, right, right. it's, you know, cause I went to animation school and so you get that book <laughs> like the first oh, yeah. week you're in animation school. It's like the Preston Blair book of animation. And did it, it come out first or afterwards? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah it, it was definitely first. And then they made the, then they made that other version, um, <laughs> like a smaller, more portable version of it. <clears throat> right, right, right. I have to but, take a look uh, and see if I can find that. Yeah, I, I have it. Um, of course, all my books are in storage because yeah. in my art studio, I don't, I don't have very many of my books out. But yeah, um, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll figure book. out where I'll figure out what it is. I'll find it on Amazon. I'll send you the link. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, yeah you I'm want, sure I can. Just do you it want it? Start. It's like one of those things where it's like it has you, you didn't, you don't really realize like. Preston Blair was one of those people who, um, like he's like Jack Kirby, you know, yeah, yeah. where it's like, he didn't, he wasn't just like one of the best people in his field. Like yeah. he created all the yeah. rules that count in right. the field, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. For like, you know, for weight and everything like that. And so it's just a, it's an invaluable book for anybody who's trying to do any kind of cartooning work. Well, even if you don't want to do animation work, just like how to build a character properly, you know, oh, and yeah. all those yeah. rules still apply even now. Like, yeah. although I would guess nowadays animation, you uh, just press a button and say, <laughs> press and play. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's, it's, right on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's never that easy. But, um, when I think about like newer shows, like, uh, Bob's Burgers like there's not a lot of that old school style in the newer stuff like those adult shows but yeah. um they still do use a little bit of it in shows like the Simpsons and stuff like those characters are kind of still yeah. built from the old school but that's partly because that show's been on for 30 plus years now <laughs> I don't know when the first uh first couple of seasons of Ren and Stimpy came out when we were like <sighs> me and my friends were blown away like just the the how how odd it was and how like some of the faces were just so the whole character was just twisted out of, you know what I mean? It wasn't a normal kind of animation thing, you know? And he, he had, uh, you know, um, come to find out later how, what a dick he was, but. You know. <laughs> yeah. I actually got to meet John K when I first kind of moved to LA and um, got to sit and talk with him a little bit. And he, you know, he is from that, like, he's like the style and the quality of how well characters are designed. Right is all that matters. Like if you don't have that to work from, you can never make an interesting or compelling piece of cartoon work. If your characters weren't designed properly. And he was like right. very, very, very yeah. into, well, I got that, uh, that happy, happy, joy, joy movie. And it kind of goes through his whole career and, and how far behind that he was on the episodes. Cause he was such a nitpicker. Mm-hmm. And it kind of goes through that whole thing and where they finally, got rid of him because he was too slow or whatever just nitpicked every little thing you know yeah Which they is, they wanted control so they could make more money so they wrestled right, it away from john wanted, you know he was so far behind on episodes i think at one point he was 19 episodes behind jesus <laughs> so yeah just, i've been I think they just wanted to get him done you know and it was hard to keep that that standard of perfectionism up you know at that rate at that quickly you know what i mean but then you know yeah. that's why that's why the series really kind of dropped off there in the third season when you know they things weren't as uh as you know just weirdly stylistic you know what I mean? 
I need to go back and watch that. It's it's like one of those things where sometimes there'll there'll be a thing they'll they'll make a movie that's about something that I love so much that it's a part of me, and then I will not be able to bring myself to watch whatever that film is. Like that movie American Hardcore was like the same yeah. thing where like right. I didn't watch that movie for a for years and years and years after right. it was out because I was like you know I get in this weird headspace where a I'll never get to see it for the first time ever again. So right. I want to make sure when I see it the first time and seeing it right. right. Um, and then the other yeah. thing is that uh, I'm just afraid that, that they'll, they'll get something wrong or they'll, you know what I mean? And it's like, or that some, it'll break something for me. And it's like, yeah. so I'm like really careful about things that I hold so dear. So I haven't ever, I haven't watched that. Yeah. Things I loved when John K show, you know, it's like, yeah. I used to like, I, I've rewatched like when I was a kid, you know, I, I loved underdog, you know, those cartoon sure. series. And then I, you know, I watch them as an adult and I'm like, God, these are dumb. Like, just like five, like five minutes, four minutes or whatever. It's just, but when I was a kid, man, I couldn't stop watching it. And it's like, you know, sometimes that happens where it's like, doesn't really hold up to what, you know, what, what your memory is, you know, like. For There's a sure, lot of things man. like that for me that I, I wish I never rewatched, but <laughs> yeah, I, I stay away from Scooby Doo for that reason. <laughs> I never like, like Scooby Doo. Oh, it's my favorite. Never. Or the Flintstones. I don't like the Flintstones because the Flint the Flintstones is just the honeymooners, and I didn't like yeah. it. It's literally the honeymooners. And I, right. I never yeah. really liked the honeymooners. And you know, you know, as as like a weird um it's funny, we're having like told like TV cartoon talk. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which is fine. It's totally fine. Um, the thing with the honeymooners was, and it and it set the tone for every single sitcom and kind of cartoon in American culture forever. Was everybody was just mean to each other the whole time, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was like when I was a kid, I wasn't interested in watching people be mean to each other. It's like yeah. I wanted to see something that wasn't like what real life was like. I yeah, wanted, not, you know, yeah. I need to escape. I don't want to watch like a typical shitty American family. And I think yeah, well, like yeah. Ralph Cramden used to threaten Alice all the time. <laughs> it's like, I'm yeah. Punch you. Oh, it's like, dude. yeah. And everybody's <laughs> screaming at each other. And yeah. he was just an asshole bully to everybody. And yeah. like, um, and right. in the end he'd be like nice for like literally 15 <laughs> seconds yeah. and, and she, all was yeah, forgotten. She, She'd give him a kiss on the forehead and then the credits would roll. <laughs> yeah. And it couldn't, I could never get into that at all. Like, yeah. and it was like, people always trip out that like, I've never have watched the Simpsons. Like, I think I've seen one or two episodes ever. I used to watch it, but yeah. I, and, I, yeah. and it was like kind of the same thing, but like same with married with children. Like I never liked that show. Cause I was like, this is like what my home life looks like. I I'm trying to get fucking away from away from that, right? Yeah. As far away from that as I can get. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like that's why I'm not in the house watching TV. I'm out in a band and doing other stuff because yeah, I, right, right. I don't. I mean, I'm trying you know, to like, get away I have from like certain TV shows that I like. And, sure, but you know, none of them are are reality TV. I can't stand that. You know, like I can't stand, and I can't stand all those music shows and dance shows. It's like yeah, no, I, I can't do those. It's like you know, like for reality shows, like if you want to put. An, an hour of somebody building a hot rod in front of me. I'll watch that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you right, know what right. I mean? Yeah. I'm not going to sit there and watch some guy dance into your no, heart. No. <laughs> oh, you know, do you think you can dance? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can sing like whatever all these shows are. <laughs> Actually, I used to watch American Idol with my daughter um, yeah. because that was like, you know, she was like, 10 years old and she's like dad you're gonna you know yeah, I, I had to have something to do with my daughter in that realm right. and so you know i'd watch it with her and and uh yeah it's sick you know I'm, i was like so glad when she stopped watching that and i could like get on with my life again right 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 <laughs> well, you know obviously it was never the music that you liked or you know if, yeah. one thing if they had hardcore american or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was, stars of hardcore or something it was know? like one of those things though where like you know even if, if you're watching something regularly and you're, you know, you, you will eventually get into it on whatever level because, you know, I was watching right, it my or whatever, watching. but like one of those things, like you, you could always tell the people who like really had it and the people who didn't, you know? And, yeah. 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 You know, but all that stuff's just, it's like, <clears throat> it's not real reality, even in the context. Yeah. Of those shows, like they they manufacture storylines. I, I, my, me and my family, 
we're on a reality TV show in the 2000s and uh, <clears throat> like half the shit was like them saying, okay, we're going to do this. And we were like, we would never do that. And they're like, okay, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> and we're like, what the Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. It was ridiculous. Except the one where you went to Vegas and all that. I yeah, remember yeah. that. I remember watching that. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. Shit, you guys are in the limousine. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, it's just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, there was like all that. They're like, look out the window and say, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, talk about scripted. Oh, uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was ridiculous. And it was like, yeah. I think the premise of the show, it was called Take My Kids, Please. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The premise of the show was that two working parents never get time to go do anything fun together. And so we're going to take the parents and send them on a fun weekend. And then one of their single friends is going to watch the kids and the hilarity ensues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, you know, the friend of ours who was on and who watched the kids, she was like married. She wasn't single, you know, she yeah. you know, was like, right. it wasn't, you know, and it was, you know, there was like all, it was, it was all totally like. Did they present her as single? Like, did they? Oh tell? yeah, totally. Oh yeah, oh, totally. Really? <laughs> they totally did. Um, it was like one of those things where like, it wasn't scripted, but the producers absolutely knew what they were going to do. Yeah. And just right. like told them, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is what you're going to do. And then basically all that was real were the reactions to the things that they had set up for them to do. Like, we're going to watch the dog, you know, in the backyard, like with the hose or whatever. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it was funny. Cause like our friend, um, cat who, who was the single woman, she was a vet veterinary technician. She's like, we're not washing this dog with cold hose water. Are you crazy? Like, that's not safe. And they're like, yeah. Oh, come on. And she's like, absolutely not. Are you crazy? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't care. Like, oh. ah, so it. we killed a dog. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, and it was funny because we were like the pilot show. And then um, by the time it actually got into being a series, they'd added like a host. And it was like a whole different show. Like we, oh, right, right, we right. were like the, the pilot, which, you know, and it was like one of those things. It was super fun. Yep. Um, I wish there was some record of it still around. I, I can't find a copy because I think my kids... Now that they're grown adults, uh, would probably love to be, to be able to watch it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, they didn't send you like a copy or anything. Or? Yeah, but it was like on VHS, oh. and like it got lost. You know, <laughs> it got lost. Item. It was you know, it was, it's almost twenty years ago. So it's, it's like, not on YouTube or something. Like, I, I can find never find it on, on YouTube. YouTube. I looked. I could never find it on YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah, super surprised. I figured for sure, right? Like, of yeah, course yeah. it's on YouTube. Maybe it'll pop up there sometime. But you know what? I I am still familiar with the production company. Like, they still exist, and I know exactly where their offices are. Right, um, right Not right. far from me. So if I needed to, I could, like, probably be like, yeah, you hey, can you they get out of business. <laughs> dig out of your archives? And they do. Yeah. They, they currently do, like, all of those shows on um like those uh, House Hunters shows, that oh, yeah, production yeah, yeah. company does all oh, those right. different yeah. House Hunters International and House Hunters. And those are totally fake. I hate to ruin oh, it yeah. for anybody, but yeah, on House Hunters, by the time they get on the show, they've already picked the house. Like all the, right. the going to other houses and houses like, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to like, and all the discussion about which one they're going to pick, it's all fake fake like the right. house has already been purchased <laughs> yeah and i know like uh, my wife used to love that uh oh what the hell was it called i can't remember what it was called they had the the woman in the uh, chip and joanne or whatever no oh, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 she used to love that show and like you know i i found out you know just of reading on the internet that they when they do those houses and they they make them beautiful they the people who own those houses don't get to keep that stuff they oh, oh yeah, all this stuff inside of it. it. <laughs> they move it out right after they shoot, and then the house is just bare. <laughs> yeah, or they can pay for all of it. And yeah, right. It. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, because that was kind of her business model when they were first getting started. Is like, my husband redesigns homes, or my husband rebuilds homes, I design them, and, and then they would do that, and she would use it as a way to sell her interior design stuff like yeah. oh, we can yeah. do this yeah. it will yeah. cost you this much extra when chip is rebuilding the house like if you want this you know whitewash ship lap wood yeah, yeah, yeah. you can yeah. have it but you know it's like they work together to kind of create a yeah. business model which is own, smart but 
She had her own like section in Target for the longest time. I don't know if it's still there, but she, she had like a Joanna game, uh, you know, just stuff that you see on the show. You could buy it. Like she's got her own magazine. Yeah, I still see it at the grocery store. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, good for her, you know. Yeah, you no, know what? I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, I'm just saying like how fake it is. You know? I don't. Everything's so living, weird. You know, you're gonna make a living, make it however you want. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not illegal and you're not, you know, victimizing people. You know, my thing. And it's the, like the only rea- like reality reality show that I still watch is Survivor. Like I still watch Survivor. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why. It's the and not only that, it's the last TV I show I watch on any of the major networks: ABC, CBS, NBC. Like I don't watch like any of those regular network TV things. Um, I, I I I saw on YouTube like 15 years ago somebody put up uh, a scene from. Uh, the Big Bang Theory yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the laugh track removed. So yeah. it was just the dialogue. Yep, yep, yep. And you literally couldn't tell where the jokes were supposed to be without yep, yep. somebody telling you what was... And I was like, this is terrible. I'm never watching this shit ever my, again. My wife, my wife loves that show, so I'll keep it quiet. <laughs> I've <laughs> never seen and it's like yeah it's yeah, so uh, yeah people do people I've do seen, i've seen other shows like that like they, they'll show like an episode of friends with no laugh track and it's like it's literal, disturbing like, uncomfortable silence <laughs> it's like it's oh disturbing it really makes you feel like a dumbass yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> where you're like i used to laugh at that yeah oh my god um, yeah. Maybe that's know. why I trust uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm so much. This is a laugh track, oh, I so I know show. I know if I'm laughing, I'm laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that pretty show. <clears throat> Cannot love it enough, actually. Yeah, it's hilarious. That show is absolutely hilarious. Um, back back a little bit to the art stuff. Um, before you started doing rock posters, were you working pro- as professionally as an artist? Because I know I, I feel like you come from the shirt industry. Has, has that yeah, always I did, been? Yeah, I was the working case? at uh, at one point the largest uh, t shirt manufacturer in the country was Salem Sportswear. Oh wow! So when I was working, they had you know designing t. It was all sports, so it was like you know you would we we would do like you know just like really janky looking you know softball shirt or whatever, and it kind of grew. And at one point they. They hired this guy who had a uh, licenses for all four major sports. So we started doing uh, character shirts like, you know, Jordan shirts and, mm. you know, whoever, you know, Wayne Gretzky and, uh, you know, anybody. Any, they, do you know who Bruce Stark is? Have you ever heard of him? He's a character. He's a, I think he's passed on now, but he was a caricature artist. And he would, mm. he used to do like a caricature of the, uh, you know, of whoever you do one of Jordan and then we would take it, do a background and, and then print them, you know, and his stuff was, um, if, if you ever get a chance, go online and look up Bruce Stock Originals. I'm he sure did, I've seen he, his work. Yeah. He's done stuff for TV guy and, you know, big, you know. Those oh, big, he, he, he does the big head big traditional head style. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. Of course yeah, I know yeah. who he is. So for a while, uh, they, he was under license with Sam Swartzy for like, I don't know, three years or something like that. Wow. So he would do like, and he would crank them out. And as a matter of fact, as just before I left, I found a, a room in this, in the building where all of his originals were. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it's like, I was like, and I, I'm like, I, I really thought to myself for a minute, grab a bunch and quit. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? It was just so fascinating to me. He would do uh he would do um ink and like uh ink wash. So they were all they were all one tone, you know what I mean? Like made it easier for them to uh to to make the screens out of. Oh and, right. And uh they were they were they were amazing. So yeah, I did that for uh I remember the first time I did a uh you know Kirby Puckett, remember him? Mm-hmm. I did a shirt for him when he got his two thousand hit. And he had it on, like on, you know, national TV. And I was like, yeah, and I was like freaking out. And I was like, oh my God, this is, a, this is really going to break me, you know? <laughs> really work, working there for another, you know, two, two or three years. But uh, yeah, that's, I, that's where I came from. Now, I started there in 1990. So uh, oh, yeah. I did that for about seven years. And then I actually went to another screen printer. But I, you know, it wasn't like sports stuff. It was, you know, kind of lame, you know, bank logos and 
<laughs> stuff like that. So it wasn't as creative, but it was a job and, you know, they paid me for my experience, which was cool. Are you so, full-time uh, freelance now? No, I work actually for another guy. The guy who used to work at Salem Sportsway has his own business now. Oh. And he does, um, he does like tourist stuff. Like, so I'll come up with a shirt and then it gets approved. And then I'll just sit there and do name drops all day. You know, it's easy. It's done. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, right. but it, so he, he pretty much has Florida covered. So he'll, you know, he, he approves something and I'll end up doing like 50 or 60 name drops, you know, Orlando. Sandal Island, Marco Island, <laughs> right. blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like all that kind of stuff, all the island stuff. He's like, he doesn't do like the major touristy city. He does more of the outskirts. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yeah, awesome so. though. That's that, you know, you know yeah, it was, yeah, I mean, pays the bills. Right. And, and, and I mean, you know, in the meantime, I do stuff I want to do, and, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't start doing posters till I think 2004. So that was my first one was uh, to get you know, like a local band, I think. And uh, it, it was it was terrible. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're, you're looking at your old stuff, you know. But, you know, I kept at it long enough where I, I got some pretty, pretty good gigs and gigs that I'm, you know, pretty proud of. So, um, yeah. you know, doing a poster for ECDC, that was it for me, you know. <laughs> you know, we all have those things in our career, you know, whether it's like a piece of merch or, you know, whatever it is, like you have those benchmarks where you're like, yes, like I got to do that thing. You know what I mean? Like right, when right. I, when I did shirts for AZDC, I was like, I don't know, like, <laughs> cool. Like how, yeah. how, you know what I mean? Like check that one off the bo- yeah, off yeah. the list. Yeah. It's like uh, the, uh, the roots out album if, like three years ago, you know, I, that is a great piece of work, by the way. I love Rosa, and I actually got became friends with Tim on uh, Facebook, the bass player, and he was like, "Hey, be interested in doing our next album cover?" And I'm like, "You guys are still together?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was so long between, you know. Yeah. And, uh, they never toured on that album, and uh, but it sold like hell. So, so uh, yeah, it's a great I'm, piece. You you, re- you killed it on that. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I think one of the things is that. Uh, our styles, um, a lot of times are, are, they're, they're pretty similar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, yeah. if, if you, if you boil down like a, a couple influences that are major for the both of us are Ed Roth and yeah. Passhead. those are like two yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like, we shared that in common. And I think one of the things that, uh, like I, I'll, every time you put something out, I'm, like I get that little twinge inside of me that's like, God, it's so much better than you would have done that same thing. And right, right. it's like, it's like we we yeah. all do that. It's that Actually, weird professional jealousy that you get, you know. And it's yeah, like yeah. it and it comes from a good place, right? Um, right. Oh yeah, yeah. I feel like that on a lot of people's faces. <laughs> like I just like I'm like, damn, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's such uh, a great but, idea. Right? I always love all your work because it's so close to the stuff that I do. All the time. I mean, it's always been that way with right. like you would post stuff on gig post and I'd be like, nice, Jeff. Like that's yeah. so, it's so good. And, uh, right. yeah, like, I think that's one of the things that's, you know, aside from that, that we both have a one thing I admire about you is that, you know, not to kiss your ass here, but you, you do a lot of like skulls and skeletons, but you don't, your style doesn't look like pus. It was, you know what I mean? The reason I stay away from skulls and stuff is because my, they were too much like pus head. And I just, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a good coattail rider. And, there are a but, lot of those dudes who yeah, have yeah, made you know, a career off of making now. work I, that looks I, like pus head. I swear to God that he is, he was pus head. And I look closer and his, I can't remember his name now, but it, yeah, it's a couple like guys that are like that. Yeah. 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 I and I heard, you know, I've heard through the grapevine that Pusshead is very slow getting, you know. <laughs> and I think he's a little expensive at yeah, this point. Right, which he should right. be. He should be expensive. Well, well yeah, I mean he kind of started that whole, you know, <laughs> skull thing. It's like, you know, and like that I don't know if you uh, you're familiar with that God machine. And yeah. he's yeah, he's yeah, done yeah, the yeah. same thing, like where he can do a skull and it doesn't look like Pusshead. You know what I mean? But it always looks like God machine. Right, exactly, exactly. And I, I think would, same thing with your stuff. It's like, it looks like I can tell on like Fisher illustration, 
especially if it's a skull from a hundred yards, you know what I mean? And that's, that's cool. I mean, I think that's, that's the way to do it is to be influenced by somebody, but not to rip them off. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, that God machine guy. I wish I could remember his, his real name. I actually know his real name. Um, oh yeah. I don't, he, I don't think I do. he told me I was one of his biggest influences and I was like, really? What yes. dude? Like, we were, we were talking about something and I, I was complimenting one of his pieces of work and he's like, dude, like coming from you, like you, like you were one of my biggest influences when I was like, you know, was this at a gallery show or something? No, it was online. It was like oh. was talking about one of his pieces and like, he like DM'd me separately from the conversation and was oh, like, right, right, right. like, I like, you know, have loved your work forever. And it was like a big part of why I wanted to do what I do and why I do so many skulls. I was like, what, wait, what? Wait a minute, what? I was like, it's not supposed to work that way. Yeah, you're like true. one billion times better than me. Right. Well, not necessarily. I mean, he's got a totally different style than you. So, yeah. I mean, no, but you know, he's like one of those guys like who guys. I, I literally wish I could draw like he draws. Like, right. There are people I look at their work and I love it. Right. But I didn't, I don't wish I could do it. And then yeah. there are people whose work I look at and I'm like, I could never do that. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, like that with uh, rock and jelly bean. Like I just look at his stuff and I'm just like, I'm like, how the fuck does he do that? <laughs> it's like, um, it's unbelievable. It's rock like, and jelly bean is one of those ones where it's like, okay, first of all, to have that grasp of human anatomy yeah, and then to be able to tweak, to tweak it and still make it look real, look real in yeah. a way that's completely unreal. Yeah, is insane. That dude's right. work is is it, yeah. I've insane. got his book and like even the fucking pencil sketches are like <laughs> it's like ridiculous. It's like I'm, did you see the um that video of the uh, Mike Sutphin his uh, Star Wars? Mm -mm. And like it, it was like a short little minute minute and a half video of him doing it. Like no, I want to watch does it, that. He does it all in like pencil, like and does all the shadows and everything, and then you know. He'll make a uh, he'll make screen pizza. and I I know that that's a uh, uh, sometimes the way that Pusset I'm not Pusset um, Rock and Jelly Bean works is it is a lot of his stuff is is pencil and then he somehow I don't know how gets it to print like it looks so soft and so like uh, that's the one thing I love about his stuff is it's not like other. Uh, gig posts is with the hard edges like I, that's how I work like I'm very yeah. you know hard edges clean and his stuff is kind of like you know like soft and, and it all blends in together it's, it's pretty astonishing so uh, it's like one of those things where um it's it's very rooted uh yeah. and when when you're thinking about like the palettes that he uses and the colors and the yeah. compositions like it's a lot of it is very rooted in like seventies Playboy magazine cartoons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it it kind of comes from that same kind of place, and so for guys like our age, like that stuff, it's it connects immediately with with oh, our right. brain because yeah, yeah. we kind of grew up looking. At, I mean, not and not even in Playboy, like any any magazine from the seventies, early eighties. Yeah, like like the kind of that and all that stuff. Like it was always that. That you know, kind of look. T-shirts in the t-shirt shop, yeah. you know, yeah. like just like it, it was it he he captures that so well. And yeah, when me and my me, me and my wife first started dating, um, when the first time I went over to her place, she had a toy shelf that had every single toy on it was a toy that I would want or have in my collection. And right. she had a bunch of those rock and jelly bean like uh girl figures, like oh, and, right. and I was like I still have them. I still, I still have them up in my stuff. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're so, they're so cool. God, yeah, his work yeah. is so cool. Yeah, I was gonna buy a couple of those, but they're pretty pricey. Oh, <laughs> I'll, like, I'll have to look. Like eBay. What's that? <laughs> I said I'll have oh, to yeah, look and see. You might want to take a look. <laughs> I'd never you know? sell them, but uh, right? No, I know. I'm just saying. Like, like the one I did buy was that one a couple of years ago. He had that mummy, the mm. chuck in the finger. Mm -hmm. And I bought that one off and that's right when it came out. So, you know, the prices weren't too bad, but I'm sure if you went back now and that was like three years ago and you looked on eBay, it would probably be a lot higher, you know, because like, oh, yeah. he does, you know, he doesn't mass produce a lot of stuff. So, uh, 
Yeah. But I'm I'm always looking. It's, and I'd love to have some of his posters, but <laughs> it's not stuff you can hang. Right. Right. In, the, right. in your house, you know, if I ever had like a private room, I could do it. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's going to end up in a flat file somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like I got enough, I got enough stuff in the flat file. And, you know, I, I got, oh, from that flat stock when I, when I met you and I met everybody and I spent, I think I spent like $2,000 oh. on fucking posters. I brought, and I purposely went out there with like a lot of, I'm like, it's going to be like crazy, you know, and a lot of people gave me deals and like, Oh, sure. Jeff, here you go there. You know, I bought like one poster and they would give me the matching poster, like uh, methane. They did a lot of the double posters. Hmm. So they would like, you know, he gave me a couple of, uh, I bought that book too. Then. There's a lot of, and it's, you know, like what you said earlier, um, when you, you see something that you appreciate, but you don't necessarily want to do methane is that for me, like for sure, you know, they have that, they have that really great aesthetic, but it's not something they don't, you know, they don't, I use like bright colors and they don't use any of that stuff. It's all used colors and, and, but it's amazing. I mean, the Jack White posters are absolutely amazing. You know, there's like so. a couple things that methane from methane over the years that I continuously steal the color, color palette from yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. they, they're, they're so good. They like totally know that it was like, you know, I, I went to animation school. I didn't go to graphic design school. I'm yeah. totally self-taught in terms of like color theory or composition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, everything I know, I learned from gig posters and looking right. at other people's art in that way. And I steal so much color theory stuff from that. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, I've done that. I, I used to do you know who I used to do that with on uh, gig posters. Um, Guy Burwell. Oh, he yeah. always had the craziest sense of color. You know, like these light candy colors and then like, but the subject matter was like jolting, you know what I mean? That it was like, it, and it almost was like a less jolting image and just because it was a candy colored thing, you know, but he, I remember, I remember ripping off his, I did a Phantomos poster once and I completely ripped the, uh, as a matter of fact, on the bottom, I, 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 I printed, uh, thanks to Guy Burwell for the color palette. <laughs> 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 guy burwell is one of those people who is um he's the genuine article and he yeah. is a true natural that yeah, guy yeah. has more talent just in him yeah. <laughs> than, yeah, yeah, yeah. than about any illustrator i've ever known like i did an art show with him and uh when he was living in la and you know there were a couple things where like we were hanging out at the gallery the night of the show and like someone would buy something and like, he'd be like, Hey, can you sign this? And he would just do a little drawing. Yeah. yeah and like yeah. those crazy, <laughs> awesome drawings that he used on those posters. Like he, he could do those in like five pen strokes, just like, right. boop, 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 boop. and it was like, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to break your hands. Guy, bro. Right. Somebody <laughs> asked me to do one of those ones on a Melvin's poster. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> took me like a, Two hours. <laughs> it was like, you know. I don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was like, oh, I was so nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, guy, and you know, he's the night. He's a totally nice guy. You know, yeah, he's I, just, know, I remember I good met him dude. Blackstock, but I haven't, uh, mm. I haven't really talked to him since then. So he's so, not really, weird, he's not really online at all. So I talked him, he, him and Andy Diesel are they they live in Portland, so they're still oh. in constant contact, and I, I think the only posters Andy prints anymore or, or whatever guy um, oh, right, right, yeah. has done. And so, you know, I, I get to say hi to guy through Andy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about yeah, as yeah. good as it gets. Cause he got, he was, he was sick a few years ago and yeah, I know. Um, he, had, he canceled, didn't he? Yeah. 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 And he's, yeah. I guess he's better now, but yeah, once yeah. he got offline from, yeah. during that time, he just never came back. <laughs> and I'm sure your life changes after that anyway, you know, oh, I, bet. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. So, and I wouldn't, I, yeah. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even yeah. imagine, you know, too many people I know. Fuck, man. Yeah. Like, I just had two good friends go through cancer this year. It's yeah. crazy. My brother had cancer and he didn't, he never smoked. He never drank. He never yeah. did drugs. He just got, he got tongue cancer and his dentist is the one who noticed it. Oh and he goodness. had half, half his tongue removed and all the nodes on his left side. Oh, my and, God. It was like a year process and, but he, you know, he's fine now. And, you know, he had to go through like speech therapy and like, oh my God, wow. it was terrible. That's a thing. You don't, you don't, 
it it doesn't have to and my be mother, bad living, you know. Her entire life, nothing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> It's like ridiculous, you know? Yeah, it's like my great grandparents both like chain smoked camel non filter yep. cigarettes for yep. like 70 years. They started smoking when they were like eight years old and smoked until <laughs> they were 90. <laughs> no, they didn't. Neither of them died from cancer. Yep. My friend's father smoked like that, chain smoked and drank like six sombreros every day. Jesus. We lived to like 92. <laughs> it's like some people you just can't kill. <laughs> yeah. yeah dude that's true that is so true i'm very fortunate i come from a family with like literally almost no cancer in the family tree yeah. which is no guarantee but it definitely helps yeah, yeah it helps us exactly. sleep at night. yeah yeah we didn't have uh, i don't think we had much i don't think we had any cancer in our family till my brother so it's weird you know Shit he, happens. Had he had a different father so i don't know that side of you know, ah, what they had you know. on that side of the family so you never know. You never yep. ever know. Um, so art wise, like aside from your day job, like what are you doing these days with art? Are you just making stuff for yourself? Are you still doing gig posters? You like well, what's your obviously the outlet? Gig posters thing is well in the I, last year. Yeah, no, I've, got but, a, I've got a couple um in the in the pipeline, but I still have to wait till till uh you know those shows are uh Set one one was for, one's for Justin McNeil and mm. one's for Jermaine. So, um, he's doing like a a series or several series actually. Oh, so wow. I'm uh, I'm I'm in on that and um, yeah. I mean, I'm hoping it comes back. You know, but then again, you know, the the one thing about the gig poster is uh, I have for my, for myself, I either have just ridiculous luck selling a poster. Like some of my posters are sold out and then others, I have the full edition. <laughs> it's, it's like no one's buying, you know, nobody buys them. And then, you know, you know how it is. You get, then you, it's like, uh, you're stuck with posts. Like I have flat files full of posters, my own and other people's. And, you know, it's like, uh, that was so a big that, part of why I got out of the game is I was like, yeah. I can't store, I can't just be a, poster storage house for right, posters right. that people have decided they don't want to buy from me. And it's right. like, and you, and you never know which one is or isn't. It doesn't really matter necessarily mm -hmm. what the band is or what the design it's just, it's, it was got too random. And, and, and the, and that industry got too saturated with, yeah. with talent. Right. Way, way better than me. <laughs> so right, I was right, like, right. And, and I got, I moved over to the merch side. Like I had, one of the merch companies came to me and was like, all of these bands you do posters for, like I own the merch rights to all of them. And why don't you just start doing shirts for me instead of these posters? And I was like, well, I don't have any inventory and I can get paid guaranteed. I'm going to make money. Uh, let's do that. And that's right, how I, right. that's how I ended up going over into doing t-shirts for all these bands instead of rock posters for all these bands. And, Worked out great. I got no yeah, inventory. I to, yeah, I used to work for a screen printer who did a lot of rock stuff. It was all, you know, all licensed and kind of, you know, it wasn't as as uh, expressive as he was. You know what I mean? I've seen some yeah. of the shirts. I've seen some of the shirts you do, but this stuff was all like, you know, uh, we'll provide you with logos and clip art. and A lot of what I do is that you too. Know, it's, and like, it's like, you know, and it's cool. It's, it's better than, you know, working on something you don't want. You know, Bank of America, or, <laughs> you know redrawing a logo or whatever you know what i mean and they send you like a fucking shirt tag from 1942 it's like <laughs> i'm like i can't use this it's just like what are you doing to me oh, uh, yeah. Can you redraw it off of this i'm like no i can't <laughs> <laughs> but you know. yeah well you know the age-old problem with working for a screen printing company you know like that everybody goes through and it's like the client sends you you know like something from you know, a, a 64 by 64 yep. logo in yep. MS word. And they're like, here you go. And you're like, yeah, yeah. it's just, like, a, I, it's less than useless. To yeah. Me. I can't even open this. <laughs> it's, it's like, like not, like, not only will it not work, I'm now mad. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yep. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah. I, yeah. But uh, I think that's, uh, you know, I'm hoping the uh, gig post thing comes back a little bit. Uh, I think I, I'll probably be a little bit more picky as to what I do. Only because, you know, uh, 
I'm running out of ideas. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I'll, uh, 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 you know, I, I think just to have having, you know, that volume of posters is not really, uh, you know, feasible anymore, you know. So uh, I won't do just any band, you know. And usually when I do like a local, I'll, I'll do like local bands all the time because sure. it's never a, yeah, very rarely a screen print. It's always like a you know flyer or something like that that's nothing you know i don't mind doing those and they're so, fun that's why we all <laughs> right, started doing uh, this stuff it's like you know and you know i've been lucky enough to uh get a really good relationship with the melvins and they fucking let you do whatever the hell you want so as you give them a cut of the poses you know what i mean it's like they had they literally have no you know no uh no guidelines or anything you know yeah yeah i've i've done my i've done my share of oh, yeah. Posters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. um i and I, I know that you you also play music are you do you have any bands that are kicking back up now that things uh, are starting actually back up again studio last week to record a couple of songs but it was for uh my guitar my old guitar player putting out solo stuff so it was just you know a couple of songs for him but uh no, I mean, right now, I mean, it's, uh, you know, God, we'd have to practice for half a year just to get back to where we were, you know what I mean? And I don't know that I'm, you know, I'm that interested anymore, you know, that kind of, that kind of, I lived that life for a brief period and it wasn't even like, you know, the rock style life. It was just <laughs> humping shit back and forth and, you know, that all the stuff that I used to not mind, I like, that's all I think about now, <laughs> like humping the drums and, you know, if I play guitar and I just had to carry an amp and a guitar, I'd be fine, <laughs> you know, but I got to cut, you know, and of course, you know, you know how bands are, you know, none of my friend, you know, none of the other guys would help me. It was just <laughs> At the end of the show, they're they're gone, and I'm sitting there breaking down drums. And, yeah, know. well, to my credit, I was never that guy. I always helped oh, the good. drummer. Yeah, <clears throat> I always helped everybody like a dumbass. Yeah. Like, like there's like that that kind of you know ongoing joke in the rock and roll world where like you know the singer doesn't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. I was I was loading that goddamn ampeg. Coughing yeah, yeah, yeah. in and out of the van. Yeah, I was well, helping my drummer get his stuff on and off. This I was always, I always helped. That was, yeah. Well, you're one of the cool ones. <laughs> I'm like maybe the only guy. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. And yeah, you know, so it's always the same thing. But you know, never say never. I mean, you know, uh, we put out a, like uh, three records. So, oh wow. Cool. You know, I mean, just local releases, but yeah, pretty no, cool. sure, pretty cool. of course. Yeah, I think if, you know if Roadsaw ever toured again and they we could open for them, that'd be great. <laughs> but I yeah, think dude, there's nothing like getting to play shows with your favorite bands. That was yeah, yeah, the yeah. thing. That was the greatest gift that my last band gave me. Was like, you know, I was in a band with dudes who were somebody, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. you know, like we played with every band I loved and could have never dreamed I would get to play with. Yeah. It was, yeah, yeah fucking crazy man it was like opened, yeah. crazy crazy we opened for uh, i mean that uh la band junkyard oh yeah they, they were like really pretty successful back in the day we've opened for them like three times but i don't like them <laughs> so uh yeah I don't, that's, I don't it's, really, it's, it's just not my favorite style of music is that andy LA? diesel and, and mike murphy both oh, love yeah. junkyard yeah <laughs> we're, yeah we play with them a bunch of times that's awesome and, though. and you know that you know, they get, don't get me wrong. I just, just in my guitar player, that's one of his favorite bands. So he was walking on, you know, oh, yeah. he's walking on air and they are actually going back out and emailed him and he was like feeling everybody out. Like, what do you guys think about uh, opening for Junkie? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, we already did that. Like, oh, I want to do it again. It's like, and I'm like, so we're going to, that's all we're going to do is play shows where we open for Junkyard. <laughs> you know, even Junkyard fans are going to be like, not these guys again. <laughs> like, <laughs> was that derailer was that the band yeah, derailer? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and did you have another band at some point over the last 20 years of our friendship yeah i was in a um i was in a few bands but i was in a uh like an 80s cover band and we like dressed up and shit and did all the oh, 80s right. shit what was that Ra band called radio star okay get it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like that was uh, that was actually pretty successful. Um, Those bands are crazy successful. Yeah, they were for a while. Yeah, they were for a while, and then obviously uh, 
pandemic came and they went down. But I was out. Of, I was out of that band because I, at one point, I was in that band and Derailer, and I couldn't. You know, I just couldn't find the time. You know, plus sure. other stuff, and so I quit the. Uh, you got a family, all kinds of. Yeah, shit. and I'm you know I'd much rather write music than just play hits. You know what I mean? So for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, you know, that was like always with my last band. That was like our, uh, like our team bonding nights. Yeah, yeah. We'd like go to this bar out here in the San Fernando Valley in LA that just specialized in those cover bands. Yeah, um, the experience bands. So you know, yeah, you'd go yeah. see like Guns N' Roses playing with Pantera and Judas Priest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, right, right, like, right. Go out and like, and like, you know, they everybody be dressed up like that band or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, like um, tribute band, you mean? Yeah, like tribute uh, bands. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it was always fun. Like you go out and drink, you know the words to every one of the songs, and you sing them all, yeah. and you have fun with your friends and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can see the appeal in it. It's just, I mean, as far as... I wouldn't want to be in a band like that. (laughs) That's what I mean. It's like, you know, like playing the same song every night is like, oh my God, I can, you know, I I understand why some bands don't play certain songs anymore, you know what I mean? So Yeah, but... You know, that's been talked about a little bit. It's like the fans want to hear it. Talked about a little bit on this show is like, when you have become a certain level of success... Yeah. You you owe your fans a little bit. No band or artist owes anybody anything but to do what they want to do. But once you've reached a certain level as a band, like you 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 got to play that song. Like right, exactly. Even if you don't want to, you've got to play that song. And, right. and it's like bands that don't like. I think at this point, and one of the things that I've learned a little bit about that, because um, me and my wife went to like this old school hip hop concert and it was right. like sugar hill gang and M- 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 grandmaster flash and like zap and all in the like coolio and right right and uh and like these groups would come out and they you know like sugar hill gang would come out and it'd, they'd do like two verses of oh right, right. rapper's mm-hmm. delight and you're like i want to hear the whole like, goddamn song the medley right yeah and then grandmaster flash would come out and like do like one verse of white lines and you're like what's happening here and and then i found out that uh it's all legal bullshit like if if all of the members from that group are not on stage they can stop the group from doing the full song so like you know like you know the guy from sugar hill gang like maybe there's only one or two original guys so they can they do their parts and then and you're like and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I remember I saw Metallica once. I think it was on the um, Black Album tour, and they oh, they God, did up they like did like a medley. And I'm like, like they they jumped into Creeping Death, and I'm like, yeah, you know. And then it's like they play like the first verse, and then they go into something else. I'm like, you son of a bitch. Like, I think Slayer started doing that, and I'm so glad I never went and watched Slayer do that bullshit yeah <laughs> would have yeah, been yeah, super yeah. pissed yeah uh, but you know i guess when you have been putting out records for the better part of 40 years well yeah uh, I mean, you know there's just so many songs that everybody only, wants I'm to sure hear they, you know they'd rather play the new stuff you know because it's new yeah. for them you know yeah, and, but that doesn't mean it's good <laughs> Yeah, no, I know. Slayer is one of those bands that like everybody knows. Like Mike Fisher loves Slayer, and then um, you know they got into that in the last like decade they were together. They got into that mode of putting out the same record over and over. It's like we know that this these songs these these twelve songs that sound like this they'll sell this many records. Yeah, they just kept putting out the same record over and over with right. sort of different album art sort of different song titles sort you know and and it was like yeah 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 yeah, and so i was like i I, like and then high on fire didn't do that high on fire kept putting out really good records and i was like oh no high on fire is my favorite band now right 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 yeah yeah i I switched over (laughs) i saw slayer i can't even remember the last time i saw them but it was it was quite it was like 15 years ago so it was you know before that whole you know i can tell you i know exactly the last time i saw slayer and it was in 1987 wow <laughs> yeah and i never really bothered to, to to see them after that because everything after 
Rain and Blood was not Rain and Blood. Um, and right. as much as I did love, but again, again, also like, like I was in dad mode from like 1990 until yeah. like 20, 2009. Yeah. I was in dad mode and I didn't go out and do much of anything. I didn't have anybody to, to go to shows I with. I think you have three. At three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they're all like adults and they're like buying houses. Are they close in age? The boys are two years and one day apart. Right. And my daughter is three years younger than them. So yeah, oh, they're yeah, all yeah. very close. They're like pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy. The boys in June are gonna be thirty two yeah. and thirty. And my daughter just turned twenty seven. So right. and you know, they're they're all, you know, they're they're all grown adults and it's weird. <laughs> but at the same time, you get you you go you go you kind of transition from parent mode to friend mode. And so yeah, I have yeah. these like really cool friends that I'm like connected to in a different way that is actually really awesome. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And two my, of the my, three of them live within a mile of me or yeah. within two or three miles of me too, which makes it even better now that we, me and my wife have moved back out here to the suburbs from, you know, kind of downtown LA. Uh, yeah. yeah. We're all out here in the, in the burbs. Yeah. <clears throat> my daughter is in, uh, I don't talk to my parents mode. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, like not at all, or just not about things. Yeah. She was closer with my wife than, than she is with me, but she, yeah, she's pretty, she's pretty mom on most things. You know, it's like, you know, she comes home from school and it's like, you know, how was your day? Good. Boom, the door shuts. It's like, it's like no, no extravagant explanation or, you know, no, no detail. It's just uh, very mm. simple, short, curt answers. And, you know, she comes out of, comes out of a room for dinner and goes, runs back in there as soon as she's done like a raccoon, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, <laughs> does, do, do you guys have any kind of like cultural connections like do you, like musically or anything do you guys listen to this similar music at all or anything or is she well, she likes you know she, uh, she likes uh, the one per- person that we can agree on is like billy eilish or something mm-hmm. you know she she really liked billy eilish early so uh but she wasn't so like it's weird she wasn't so like this japanese video game music and then she wasn't so like 1940s crooners <laughs> like so i'm like like when she goes to bed at night she puts on like 1940s music really low and falls asleep to it you know and i'm like i i don't listen to it but i i, I appreciate it i'm like you know wow it's uh that's that's different coming from you know when when she was young man nah, she, all she listened to was japanese anime music it was like just really <laughs> fast and people who didn't exist she was into like <laughs> now japan does that they make like a yeah, pop yeah, star yeah. And then she, it's no, it's not anybody. <laughs> it's like, you know, they have videos and she's like superimposed on the screen. And I'm like, yeah, but she's not real. Like I say that to her. I don't know how many times I've said that to my daughter. Like she plays video games and she, she'll come up to me and dad, can I borrow $8? You know, this was when she was a little bit younger. I'm like, but what? She goes, I want to buy a hat in this video game. I'm like, I'm like, you know, that, that's not real. You're paying for something that you're not even getting. And she, I would try to explain it to her. And she was just like, yeah, I don't care. I want it. It's just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, or I want wings. I want to, I want to have wings in this video game. Can I, can I borrow $12? Wings at $12? <laughs> oh my. Like, you know, yeah, just- that was like a, a development in video games. Like kind of as I was leaving the industry, those microtransaction thing where like yeah, yeah. they made money off of you constantly inside of the game right the uh, game was free and then then you had to buy all this stuff to level up and blah 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 and it's like uh, that's not real it's none of that stuff is real i swore i would never in my life ever participate in that yeah. and uh and then i started doing sim sim racing with my brother-in-law a year yeah. ago and um yeah, I'll spend five bucks on a car that I yeah, yeah, yeah. for for for, well, for or like you're an adult. <laughs> you, know, you know you know better. You know it's not real. So and it's yeah, but I'll still do She's it. She's spending my money. <laughs> That's the family money, Jeff. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> once, Unbelievable. Once you've like, had it's children, like those, it's the family money. It's like that. Those uh, that new thing, that NFT thing. I don't even know what that is. Like, <laughs> I have no idea. And it's like, and yeah, I hear people. A, 
sticky I'm, one. Yeah, making money. And I'm like, you buy something, but you don't really own you own the digital copy. I don't I don't I never even I was like, I just don't get it. I like if I buy something. I want something for my money that I can put in my hand. <laughs> well, but you've certainly bought like software that you don't. Oh yeah, right, right, right. I mean, that's that's fact, all it is. <laughs> I'm still running CS6. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's just kind of the same principle, I guess. Is there are things that you know what an NFT is literally no different than those wings or the hat that your daughter wanted. Right. That, exactly, exactly, exactly that thing. It's like you own some digital piece of a thing. But like, um, can you look at it or can you? <laughs> yeah, it's just it. The, the thing that's funny is not only can you look at it, anybody can look at it. It's right. not even. It's like not even like a painting that you can have in your house, and now it's only in your house. Like. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah. All that art still exists online. No, like, what kind of money? Own I mean, the rights to it. I saw the the that one that sold for like millions or whatever. But like in general, like what do people get for that? Like, what, well, I, I won't name any names, but right? we have a common friend, right, who is currently doing a lot of NFT sales, mm -hmm. and um. I've been keeping track a little bit because I was kind of wondering if it was something I might want to try to do. Yeah, and yeah. I know that that person has sold like a hundred NFTs in the last couple months. Right. And looking at the sales history of those, um, there's th the, the NFTs that I'm aware of use only can be bought and sold using a cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Yeah. Which is like the second most valuable to Bitcoin. Right. Um, and so you have to buy Ethereum to set up your accounts and sell your NFTs. And then the customer pays you in Ethereum. So right now, let's say Ethereum is at about $4,000 to a US dollar, which is where it is. Right. And, um, and so if you sell your NFT for 1.2 Ethereum, you sold it for six grand. Right. Um, and then you get that cryptocurrency. And then next week, if it goes down, it might not be six grand. It might be three grand. But right. Um, but so let's say that person we know has sold 100 pieces over the last couple, you know, like they've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars. But it's not real money. <laughs> you can you can cash it out into real American currency. Oh, you, you can can't. you can sell your cryptocurrency back. You can change it back into money. So like if somebody pays you in Ethereum yeah, but, for something, you yeah. you put that into your account and you cash it out and they send the money to your bank account. They but, cash. They, but if it's something is worth a hundred thousand dollars in that cryptocurrency, what's it worth in real money? A hundred thousand dollars. It is. <clears throat> so let's l look at it this way. Um, let's say I'm going to sell an NFT for one Ethereum and the right. price for that is $4,000. The person who's buying it from you has to use one, th one piece of Ethereum that they have to pay $4,000 to get to transfer to you. It's the, the, the cryptocurrency is just like a, like if you wanted to start buying cryptocurrency and you wanted to buy one Ethereum coin, you would yeah. get 4,000 American dollars. You would put that into your account. You'd buy that piece of Ethereum. And then maybe next week it's worth $5,000. You cash it out and you get $5,000 in cash. You've made $1,000 off of that piece. Right. Of course, it could go down to 1,000 and then you just lost 4,000, $3,000. Right. But yeah, 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 it's like yeah. a stock. It's just all, stocks. Yeah. It's really just it's stocks. Like stock market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, and so it, it, you know, you don't have to, always use one full ethereum coin like you could buy something for like 1 60th of an ethereum which is okay, you know, okay. it's, so it's like you can split them up they're not yeah, all yeah. one it's like one bitcoin doesn't have to be spent as you know there's you can break it into any denomination that you need to um to get whatever it is that you want and you know to, 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 <laughs> we're now talking about cryptocurrency. I know, I know. Uh, yes, uh, but it, it, I know nothing about so. No, but it's interesting though because the NFT thing. It's a at, at the moment, it's a real thing. Um, right. 
I, now, is there like a website, like an NFT website? Like that's where you would go to, to look or buy? There are a bunch of different, they're like basically like, I mean, all they are is art dealers. They're just right. an online gallery. And this, this online site acts as your art broker. Um, right. So you set everything up through them and they, you know, they handle like a certain portion of it for you. And then, uh, yeah, people go to that website. They look at whatever NFTs are available and they can choose to bid on them. They're usually like, it's usually a bidding situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing that's funny and interesting is that when you set up your NFT auction, you can choose to, um, set up a royalty. So if somebody buys your piece and then sells it for a profit, yeah. you get a percentage of that sale. Oh, okay. So there's like a, there's a sales royalty thing. So right. let's say you sold a piece for $4,000, one Ethereum piece or, piece or whatever. And then that person two months later sold it for 10,000 and you had a 10% royalty. You just got a thousand dollars for doing nothing. Um, and so, you know, a lot about it. You should get into it. <laughs> I, uh, it costs, um, it costs you money to, yeah. to do it. Well, um, to get started, right? Well, anytime you list a piece, it costs you a certain amount of money. I, I don't know the exact amount, but from what I was reading, it seemed like it was going to cost you about 80 bucks right. to, to, list. to list something. Right. Um, and I was like, uh, I don't, I, I'm so gun shy about yeah, that yeah. kind of shit from the rock poster yeah, 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 yeah. industry where I'm like, I don't want to spend a bunch of money, money on something that I don't know if, if I'm ever going to be able to recoup on. And it, I know it's 80 bucks or whatever, but, um, yeah, well, I feel like listen. you're going to want to do more than one. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, yeah, every time you list something, it's going to cost you. And look, money. if you are a name artist, of course it makes sense to do them because you can make money off of your name. Um, I am not, it seems like you need to be a name artist and then yeah. you have a built-in market or you need to be a super modern current person who knows what weird internet trends are funny and interesting to 25-year-olds and you can sell them things that are related to that. And I'm neither of those things. Yeah. So it didn't make yeah, much yeah. sense to invest in it. And then, you know, there's like, there's an environmental impact to the NFTs where um, for cryptocurrency, uh, cryptocurrency runs the only value that any cryptocurrency truly has is the blockchain software that it is built on. And to, to give you a very quick <laughs> blockchain lesson is anytime a blockchain is a piece of code software code that when it's like a contract right and so if me and you traded one bitcoin yeah. it's a block train blockchain contract and as soon as me and you make that transaction it sends the contract out to multiple computers which encode that over and over and over again so that there's this big chain of verification that the contract is real and exists. And so right. that's how we know me and you, that's how things become real is right. through this online contract through the blockchain. It's, it's basically a chain of computers. Right. Um, the, the, the process that, um, that those computers go through is called mining. Right. right, right. And mining takes a lot of computer power and, that takes a lot of energy, electricity. And yeah. so NFTs, I saw one estimate. I do, I cannot stand by this statement at all. It's something that I read and I don't know how real it is, but yeah. what I heard was the amount of computation power an NFT requires through its blockchain contract is enough to run a small town in like Holland right. for like a year. <laughs> it's oh, like, really? it uses a shit ton of electricity and yeah. energy. And so 
there is an environmental imp- impact that I'm not super excited about. And again, yeah. I, I could be totally, I, I could not be understanding that properly. And I could have yeah. gotten some negative propaganda. You never know nowadays right. yeah, what's exactly. real and what's not. Cause there are people out there who want you to believe something is not real and people who equally want you to believe something that is real when neither one could be true at all. It's a right. weird time to be alive. It's like anything. Yeah, yeah. And so this is just from the information I have. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it just yeah. didn't seem like something I wanted to wade into. And now that, I honestly feel like if if it, if you were doing it sometime between January and like April, yeah, it made a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, and now I feel like it's not a long lasting thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like like everybody said the same thing about cryptocurrency, and I I I do not agree. I think crypto cryptocurrency is the future of human currency, right? Um, because like one of the things is that like I was saying about the blockchain each coin uses its blockchain for a different specific purpose. Um, like there's one called Tron, uh, a Tron coin and its entire existence is, um, going to be way for, um, like musicians and artists to sell their music to their customers directly um, yeah, yeah. using that coin in particular. Um, yeah. so the blockchain is built specifically to create contracts between, me, the music, the musician, and you, the buyer. Um, and, yeah. and so every blockchain kind of has its own and, and, and how valuable the coin is, is how usable is that blockchain technology? Like Bitcoin is the big one because like you can't, there are places on earth you can use it to, to as actual currency. You could right. buy things with it. Yeah. Um, and Ethereum is becoming that uh, also partly because of the NFTs. It's shot the Ethereum yeah, yeah, yeah. through the I, roof. I, I know I read the other day of something that Tesla won't accept something. Because it uses too much energy. They're right. trying to yeah, be yeah. green. Right. Of course, that's like a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Tesla's oh, yeah, exactly. Nother. Well, it took me uh, an hour to set up this computer to, to talk to you. So <laughs> I'm not getting into fucking NFTs. <laughs> uh, yeah. When me, like and Jeff, me and Jeff, when we were getting going, it took us a few minutes to, <laughs> to get everything set up. Uh, it. Jeff oh, had, it didn't take you long. It took me long. Well, <laughs> you know, I kind of do it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. You helped me out though. Uh, I hope I taught you something about NFTs though. I hope yeah, you learned absolutely. at least a little you something. You taught me that I don't want to be involved. um there are definitely people and um companies who will do all the hard work for you like if you wanted to sell pieces as nfts like you would just give them some money and they would handle the rest and once it's right they'd send you back money into your crypto account they you know you gotta spend money to make money and there's no guarantees so yeah and me and my wife talked about it. She's like, maybe you should. And I was like, and we talked about it. And she's like, oh, I mean, I like I, I've she's like, you've got way too much other shit going on with your yeah, yeah. kid it's robot contract thing. and the podcast. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I like I know Kozik does it, and I think Jermaine. I saw he did a couple, and there's a few people. So yeah, but, like yeah, said, I know some people who've made a bunch of money doing it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I yeah, just. Well. You know, I knew a lot of people who made a lot of money selling rock posters. I just wasn't one of them. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, no I did something. okay. I did okay. Yeah, I, had some, yeah. I had some good years. Like, there was, like, probably three or four years between, like, 2002 and 2005 where yeah. I, I made a legitimate amount yeah, of yeah. money at, for a side hustle you know yeah right exactly yeah for, for a while i did pretty well so and you know you birthed god machine so <laughs> i don't know if i'd go that far <laughs> 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 i i i birthed three children and that's <laughs> all i'm willing to take responsibility <laughs> for <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh man it's been super awesome talking to you jeff you are yeah, one of my favorite you too. online friends and and it and, and i do know you in real life and so we are real life friends too but i do love chatting with you every day online and yeah man um, you I've, know, always, I have a blast it's been a blast been always making fun. each other laugh show each tell, other cool i can tell tom pop a lot lot of that if i did it he can do it <laughs> I, I wish tom would come on i, I really yeah. do 
Uh, he's one of my favorite people. I like yeah. him a lot. He's a super cool guy. Cool. All right, man. I'm going to let you get back to uh, your daughter ignoring you. Thank you. And- <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I appreciate your time, Jeff, and I will uh, talk to you soon. All right, buddy. Talk to you.